Maybe we should just go ahead and put the uh, <laughs> floor end on. Oh, why do you guys even watch these videos? <laughs> oh, crap. All right, let's try this again. What's going on, guys? Going to do an update video to my Remington 1100 project here. Uh, if you guys missed the first video, it was on re-bluing the entire barrel. This one was really beat up and pitted and scratched and whatnot, and the bluing was just all over the place. So I stripped it all down and re-blued it. Today, uh, we are going to replace this magazine tube cover uh, because it is also rusted, but I don't feel like spending all that time refinishing that one. So I just bought this one online and it appears a lot bigger than the one that's on there. I guess we'll go ahead and install it. See what it looks like, I guess, huh? But in all actuality, I wanted to add a little more magazine capacity to this, this here shotgun. So today I got my Carlson 8-shot magazine tube that we're going to go ahead and install today. I got this one in the mail finally, and we are going to go ahead and install it in this video. So you can see here you get a nice little magazine extension. This is metal. Uh, and then the cover that goes onto it, which again is kind of nice because mine is all rusted out, and this is going to kill two birds with one one stone, or two birds with one shot one day. <laughs> hey, I didn't even mean to do that. That worked out pretty well. It comes with a barrel clamp that clamps onto the barrel as well as the magazine tube. It has a swivel sling stud right here so that you can still utilize your sling. And of course it comes with the um, tube yeah, plug, I guess just to say, uh, magazine guide. And an extra spring that is long enough for this extra length in your magazine tube. This is gonna be fairly straightforward and uh, you guys are just gonna ride along if you want. So here we go, we're gonna go ahead and remove the sling and loosen the cap, which I really cranked on there last time I had this part. And that comes right off there just like that. This comes off just like that. And now I have to remove, there's this little plug that's inside of there. And all I gotta do is pop that open and then remove the whole spring and everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this, of course, is under spring tension, so I don't want this thing to go flying out and smack me in the face. Okay, and there it is. Again, that was that cover that we won't need. Here is my factory spring. Again, you can see that is much shorter than the one that came with this. And again, this is just going to be pretty straightforward. Dropping the new spring in with this. Oh, you know what? I'm going to take a wild guess. Might help if I quickly check the instructions and make sure that plug doesn't go on the top side. Okay guys, it appears that during installation, which you guys won't have to see, uh, I ran into a slight issue right here with the magazine and my follower would not come out of the magazine tube. Upon further inspection, I found there to be some kind of a lip inside of here. Uh, this isn't a newer, a newer model, there's no tabs to remove or anything like that. It just seems like, for some reason, maybe this got dropped at some point uh, while it was disassembled. Uh, but my magazine follower is basically stuck in there. It would not come out at all. So, what I realized was going to happen, I'm going to use this new follower. What I realized was going to happen is that once I install everything, and the rounds and the magazine follower got to about here with all the rounds stuffed in there, once it got to there, that was going to be stuck right there and I would not be able to get anything out. So I had to remedy that by opening up this, this magazine well right here. Uh, basically bump it out to the diameter it's supposed to be in. I'm just, I just used this little ratchet here extension and because it has that edge that is going to bump it out and it's just about the perfect size. So I realized, hey, if I use this, hammer it down a little bit. That bumped my magazine well back to the diameter that it was supposed to be. I didn't have to do it much. And now, as you can see, if I drop my magazine follower in, it goes all the way in, it comes all the way out, exactly how it's supposed to. So no matter how simple this project <laughs> seems that it was going to be, you know, something as simple as removing the cap, the spring, and the follower, and inserting the spring, the cap, and the follower, something had to happen. So there it is. Let's go ahead and get this thing all back together now that it's functioning as it's supposed to. Okay, now that we're back in the game, again, I'm just going to go ahead and use this follower that came with the new kit. Uh, it is supposed to guide 
this uh, spring as it gets collapsed fully uh, better than I guess the factory follower. But if I have any issues, I can always switch back to my factory follower. And I get this uh, four end on here. Go. Nope. Now we can go ahead and install. This is such a big shotgun. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not trying to put my whole body in front of the screen here. But let's get that on there. This feels like a nice, strong spring, so that's good. I was always, you know, firearm is really only as good as its magazine, and this thing worked perfectly uh, before any modifications. So I expect this to keep and continue working perfectly with this new modification. But we will find out, won't we? Switch positions here, get this thing, get on there nice and tight. Feels good. Foreign's not moving. And it came with this little doohickey here, which I'm gonna install onto this side. And I feel really bad about clamping this onto the nicely blued barrel. Got that on there, and then I removed it again because I'm actually quite surprised that this thing didn't come with any kind of a washer. So I went ahead and fished around and found a washer in there. Now I can utilize my sling on this sh shotgun still by connecting it right there to that point, and then onto the factory buttstock setting. So look at that. That doesn't look too bad at all. The finish definitely does not match <laughs> my new blued barrel. Uh, I can assume that if I had a factory blue on there that that would actually probably match better. Uh, but if I really wanted to, I guess I could always just strip that whole thing down and uh, re-blue this one. So that option is there if I wanted to do that, but I don't think I'm gonna. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to find out how this thing shoots here soon. For those of you guys that are following along, I have ordered a Boyd's Pepper Laminate Woodstock to go onto this thing. It's going to really bring it out. And I have ordered Brownell's Alumahide with the, uh, I think it's called Wolf Gray is what I'm going to do this, uh, this uh, receiver. So with all of that, two-tone and all should come together pretty nicely. I don't know how long it's going to take to get the, uh, the uh, Boyd stock on here, but uh, I guess we'll just wait and find out. Other than that, I have a Volkortsen extractor coming in the mail. Everything runs fine, just, just fine on this thing, but I'm replacing the extractor anyway because build it better, says Volkortsen. Anyway, guys, appreciate you watching me replace my magazine tube cover <laughs> with a longer one. This should hold eight rounds now, just fine. I'm not going to test it right here. We'll take it out shooting here in a little bit, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.